Hello, my friends. On behalf of all of us at the St. John St. Paul Collaborative, I'd like to wish you and your families a very happy and blessed Easter. Welcome once again to our Liturgy of the Word that we celebrate weekly, and this is our Easter version. Let's begin in prayer. Loving God, be with us. In this time of darkness and suffering, let the light of Christ's resurrection shatter the darkness. Be with us in our need and help us to be instruments of your light and love and witnesses to the power of your resurrection to all we encounter. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea? Beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. 
This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness for sins through his name. The word of the Lord. of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was white as snow. 
the guards were shaken with fear of him and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful, yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Mary Magdalene slept fitfully. In fact, she had barely slept at all for days. She woke up that morning, and as she was in that place between waking and sleep, she was filled with an overwhelming sense of gloom. Had she had a nightmare? But as she came to consciousness, she realized that her nightmare was reality. She had been there, kneeling helplessly at the foot of the cross as her beloved Jesus was tortured and murdered. Without him, she did not know how she was going to go on. He was everything to her. Mary Magdalene was among Jesus' most faithful disciples. While many of the men were in hiding for fear of their own lives, Peter denied even that he knew who Jesus was. Mary was faithful to the end, kneeling helplessly at the cross, and her grief was more than she could bear. How would she go on without him? So she decided early on that third morning to make her way to the tomb. Perhaps she would gain some comfort just in being near Jesus' broken body. So she woke her companion, the other Mary, and the two women made their way to the tomb. What they discovered when they got there, though, was something they could never have imagined. First an earthquake. Then an angel descends from heaven, sits on the stone which, stone which had been lying in front of the tomb, and spoke to her those words which she would never forget. I know that you are looking for Jesus, the crucified. He is not here. He has been raised, just as he said. The beginning part of my little reflection today uh, is not contained in the scripture. That part about, um, about Mary uh, tossing and turning in her bed and having that sick feeling and wondering whether it was a nightmare. Often when I pray with the scriptures, I use my imagination in thinking about what the characters in the stories must be feeling and thinking. It helps me in my prayer to flesh out the story that we get the bare bones account of, remembering that there are real people who are having real human experiences. <clears throat> but that, <clears throat> that image of Mary in her waking from her sleep on the third morning and the day of Christ's resurrection, actually came to me several years ago. But this year, it struck me in an entirely different way. Because who of us cannot relate to that experience? Lying in bed, and as we begin to wake, having that sick feeling in the pit of our stomach, that sense of doom, and we wonder, have we had a nightmare? And then we awake to realize, no, that the nightmare is the reality of life these days. The way that the coronavirus has affected all of our lives, it has completely upended life as we knew it just a few weeks ago. 
Even going to the supermarket is a surreal experience. What normally would have been a pleasant trip in and out, I used to love to greet personers at Roach Brothers or Whole Foods or wherever I ran into them. Now we're in marked places, six feet apart from each other, everyone donning masks and gloves. It's, it's just so different from what it was just a few weeks ago. But I'm encountering people who are really suffering terribly. I've ministered to people whose spouses are dying in the hospital and they're not able to be with them. I've talked to so many people who are so concerned about their parents in nursing homes. They haven't been able to see them for about a month. And as coronavirus seems to be spreading quickly through these institutions, they of course are in terrible fear for the well-being of their loved ones. So many of our parishioners are on the front lines of the medical battle against this disease. Those brave doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals. I see your faces throughout the day in my mind, and I'm continually lifting you up in prayer. These truly are difficult and dark times. And now, it's Easter. Easter, we began preparing for Easter in the St. John St. Paul Collaborative back in February, planning all of our Holy Week services. And one of the big concerns for Easter was making sure that we had enough Eucharistic ministers, enough musicians and so forth for the huge crowds we were expecting, which we normally get having our video feed going in the St. Paul Parish Hall and downstairs in Powers Hall at St. John's, making sure that everyone was going to be able to receive communion and that we would consecrate enough hosts. Those were our worries in February. Today, it's a very different reality this Easter. The churches are empty and we are all isolated and separated from each other physically. But this is a time, like no other time, when we truly need to know the power of Christ's resurrection. Although the church is closed, Easter is not canceled. Jesus has risen from the dead. And the power of his resurrection is what is going to sustain us through this difficult time and is going to show us the light in moving forward. Right now, we are like Mary Magdalene, standing at the edge of the empty tomb, peering in. After the angel's words, Mary, no doubt, began to see already the healing rays of the light of Christ's resurrection emerging from that empty tomb, that her gloom was turned to hope because Jesus was with her again. As we gaze into the tomb, can we see the light of Christ's resurrection already beginning to shine in the darkness of this very difficult time? There are a couple of things that I've noticed. I've, had, I've seen and had conversations with lots of people, and when we see see this day, it usually doesn't mean seeing them in person. For people in my generation, when we heard the word Zoom, we thought about that 1970s WGBH public television show for kids. Remember, send it to Zoom, oh, two, one, three, four. I'm really dating myself by that. But Zoom means something else now. I didn't know what this Zoom platform was three weeks ago, but now I'm using it every day to be in touch with people. And one of the things that I'm hearing from more and more people is that they are praying so much more than they ever did saying the rosary, very much aware of their need for God in their lives. Perhaps that is a grace emerging out of this great difficulty. In the frantic pace of our usual lives, we often don't have enough internal and interior quiet to recognize that place in us that longs for God and that only God can fill. 
But as many of the usual things have, taken, have been taken away from us for the time being, we become more aware of what is truly important and truly precious and are able to nurture that relationship with the risen Christ. And it's also in our relationship to others. People are taking care of each other, watching out for their neighbors, making sure that people have food and medicine. People are looking beyond themselves in this difficult time to see how they can help others, reaching out to the most vulnerable among us. These are signs already of Christ's healing light, of Christ's resurrection. People are realizing also how much we are important to each other. I've been going on lots of long walks during the day, and I tell you, it really very much makes my day when I run into a parishioner. And as we have conversations with each other, from a safe social distance, of course. We realize how important we are to each other, how much the gathering of the body of Christ means to us and how much we miss it. But how much in these times, in ways different from we, what we have had to consider before, we are still very much connected to each other. We are one as the body of Christ and the communion of saints Let's continue to support and love each other through these difficult days. This is an unfolding story. The story of how the coronavirus will progress, but also an unfolding story of all of our lives. But one thing we need to remember on this Easter day is that despite the difficult circumstances we are walking through communally, all the people in the world. Christ has not abandoned us. And the power of his resurrection is more present now than ever, if we only call upon him. He is risen. Alleluia. And so it is from the bottom of my heart that I wish you and your families a very happy and blessed Easter. As we gather in our domestic churches, unable to celebrate together in person as a community of faith, we rejoice that God is with us. Just as our Lord Jesus defied all human understanding in his rising from the dead, he is with us, each as individuals, and simultaneously in our corporate worship. We turn to him now with hearts full of joy at the dawning of a new creation. For every family gathered together and knit as one by God's covenant love, that they might rejoice even now in the promise that God has not abandoned us, we pray to the Lord. For every person seeking to worship God in pleasing ways to him, that this feast would be a reminder we are children of the apostles, born into the world of their witness, and that sharing the truth can be most profound and our own homes, we pray to the Lord. For every spiritual stone that might remain in our path to our own likeness to God, may it too be rolled away by the power of Christ's resurrection, we pray to the Lord. For all who long for the sacraments, may they feel God's presence in them in a richer and fuller way during this Easter season, we pray to the Lord. For all doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals, may God grant them perseverance in the weeks to come as they fight the war for every one of us. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, and particularly those who have lost their lives to COVID-19, may they see the day of promise when they will be with him in glory. We pray to the Lord. Thank you, my dear friends, for joining us for this special time of prayer together. 
Let's keep each other in prayer during these difficult days. Take care of each other. And in this way, we really do let Christ's resurrection shine, even in these dark times. So let us pray. Loving God, be with us. Fill us with your grace. And let us know with confidence that your light, the light of Christ's resurrection, conquers all darkness. And let us be instruments of that light and love in the world. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And to all of you, a very happy Easter.